Uh, you know. So I had hundreds of millions of people, too. Yeah. We had a tremendous weather. Wait, back it up. In his most recent interview with supporter Mike Lindell, Donald Trump was slurring his words? In disbelief, or was it not? You know. So I had hundreds of millions of people, too. Yeah. We had a tremendous, whether it was Twitter or uh, it was Instagram, Facebook. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had, you know, uh, just massive numbers of people. And it seems clear that Donald Trump physically is not well. And emotionally, he remains obsessed with the 2020 election. We know what happened. Right. You see it in the reports. You see it in everything. And also, they're guarding. They're so guarding it. They don't want to give the votes. They don't want to give the ballots. Now, a growing number of prominent Republicans are saying it's time for Donald Trump to move on. You know, I've always been about the truth. And he lost the election in 2020. And to continue to talk about it having been stolen undercuts our democracy. And if you just want to be a partisan Republican, it's not good for our party. Another high-profile party figure is Rupert Murdoch, the owner of Fox News. Murdoch tells Trump he needs to leave the past behind. In a recent shareholder meeting, Murdoch said, quote, The current American political debate is profound. It is crucial that conservatives play an active, forceful role in that debate. But that will not happen if Donald Trump stays focused on the past. Iowa should continue to vote first in the nation. That's right. Even in Iowa, where Republicans are among the most conservative in the United States, support for Trump is eroding. A Des Moines Register poll asked Republicans, who are you more loyal to, the Republican Party or Donald Trump? 62% said the party, only 26% said Trump. And this trend has huge implications. Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster, and thanks for joining us. I know, I know, there have been prominent Republicans who have stood up to Donald Trump before, only to turn into passionate supporters. I'm thinking of Senators Lindsey Graham, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, and others. And several Republicans who have consistently criticized Donald Trump have been flattened, driven out of office, or expelled from the GOP. However, the recent statements from Rupert Murdoch and Chris Christie seem different. Both helped Donald Trump throughout his presidency. Murdoch, of course, controls a powerful media empire, which was shamelessly pro-Trump. And Christie advised Trump and assisted with his 2020 campaign. The criticism now from Christie is particularly blunt. Let's take a look at the title of his new book, Republican Rescue, Saving the Party from Truth Deniers, Conspiracy Theorists, and the Dangerous Policies of Joe Biden. America's highest profile truth denier and conspiracy theorist is Donald Trump. The message to other members of the GOP and the country is that continuing to support Donald Trump is dangerous. Now, I know that the conventional wisdom has been that Democrats are doomed but even if approval ratings for Joe Biden and his party are still down in 2024, remember Donald Trump had the most consistently poor approval ratings of any president in the modern era. Joe Biden may seem uninspiring, but a lot of voters still haven't forgotten the four years of Trump chaos. It is possible that the Trump criticism now will not inspire other Republicans or fuel an anti-Trump GOP surge, but it certainly is intriguing. Coincidentally or not, Republican National Committee Chair Ronna McDaniel has finally just acknowledged Joe Biden's 2020 win. A year later, she says, Joe Biden won the election. He's the president. We know that. Is the dam finally breaking? Well, it would certainly be nice to return to an era when Republicans debated the best policies for America without subjugating themselves to the feelings of Donald Trump, an unstable and now cognitively impaired loser.